I feel my third one now, besides the industry, just a personal one, mm. is I'm struggling with falling pregnant. So it's a story that I've been trying to sort out and going to doctors, but I'm at a point now where I'm tired mm. of trying whatever that needs to be tried. I think mentally and emotionally, I'm just exhausted of it. Um, and I'm just, I'm not getting that breakthrough. Mm. I'm not getting that it's, it's going to be okay. Even though I know that it's going to be okay. I just still feel like this obstacle, this hurdle is so hard to get over. Um, that's where I am in my life now. And it, it's, it's still very, I don't know how to put it. It's still very painful to move past it. But some days are better than others. Um, eventually, I do hope to get to a better place where I, it doesn't make me feel like this because it is yeah. making me feel like this currently. I'm sorry. Yeah. 702. The upside of failure. Sometimes failure is the foundation of greatest success stories. Nobushle Mimi Matlasela, and you would know her if you're a Seven Land fan as Aggie. Welcome. Thank to seven you. or two afternoons, and you. Uh, you 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 got here. Yes. You got here being stuck <laughs> in that mess on the M1 yes. with minutes to spare. So thank you for that. Uh, I don't know what magic you performed on the on the highway, but you got here. Yeah, thank you very much. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, I think also it it it, 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 it's, it wasn't beyond my control. It, yeah. it was a miracle that just worked out on its own, and I'm here. And you're here because you are blessed. You are blessed, yes. Aggie. You are blessed, Aggie. Okay. So I mean, if you don't know Nobuchle Mimi Matlasela, born in Alex, uh, we all know where Alex is here in Johannesburg, Alexandra, uh, fondly known as Mimi. I want to ask you about that name. Has you've been in the entertainment industry for seven? years that's a long time and not easy not easy in this country as well and in that time you managed to establish your portfolio in tv film voiceover work you do mc work you produce and you actually take to the stage as well yeah? yes i'm a theater trained actress what's your favorite if you had to choose your favorite of all the things that that that, that you're capable of what's your favorite <laughs> theater acting I always wonder about that when, yeah. when, when the people we see in the big movies decide that they want to go and do theatre. I'm like, but isn't that so much harder? You've got to remember those lines and there are people watching you live and, you know, you don't get to have that person where you go, line please, you know, in the movie. <laughs> yeah. You can't do that in the theatre. Yeah. What, what, what is the draw of theatre? It's so raw and it's so instant as well. And it's just the process of preparing for it. TV is um, it's, it's very quick and, and we make believe a lot. Theatre is just so real for me and your audience is right there. The connection is like so instant. Yeah. And yeah. that's what I love about it. Wow. Then you you really love a challenge, hey? Yeah. <laughs> you really love a challenge. So, Seven Delan, for, for those uh, who know you from there mostly, yeah. um, how long were, were you on the show? I was on the show for 18 years. 18 years? Yeah. Um, I started on the show in 2005 12th October, and we finished last year in October. Okay, then you couldn't have been in the industry for 17 years. You've been in this industry for how long? Uh, I actually started with 17 years. Okay, so 18 years. We just lost a year there. (laughs) Yeah. And then that coming to a very abrupt end. Uh um, Well, it lasted. When when was the last show? uh, When when did it air? The last episode? The last episode aired on the 26th of December 2023 to a lot of anger and disappointment and confusion, I would imagine, not just for viewers, but for you as the cast and and crew. Um, I don't know if you're allowed to to talk about it at at this point, but what happened? Um, We don't know what happened. We uh, were called into a meeting, obviously, one day, and we were told, listen, this is the end of the road for you and the broadcaster, so we are going to be ending the show because finances and yeah so but it was so popular it was a very popular show it really really was um the people that worked on it as well were very hard working they put their all into it to make sure that we bring out the best quality show so yeah it was a shocker um i think i'm still a bit what am I doing? Yeah. I have a, today to I have be... a job and not, not <laughs> yesterday I had one and today I don't. Yeah. And, and it feels wrong to have so much free time now. I'm thinking, what am I doing outside of studio? I'm supposed to be in studio somewhere. Mm. And I'm like, oh, wait a minute. No, that's that's done. So, yeah, it's it, it's it's been a process. So what are you doing now? 
still acting definitely because mm-hmm. that is my first love where uh, I am uh, I currently shot a feature film in January and I'm mm. doing various auditions as well um, I won't I don't think I, I will ever give up acting like I said it's my first love Absolutely. Um, I definitely want to pursue it more um, but yeah um, we will see how it goes okay. I'm, I'm auditioning a lot okay so, so you're that in that fantastic. in between phase it's like I'm starting over again like yeah. I've been given an opportunity to start my career over again and that's what I'm doing. Had Seven Alan not ended when it ended, do you think you would have stayed with it for much longer? Because there comes a point where I'm sure 18 years, and, and did you you played one one character for 18 years? Yeah. Um, and, and you know, at, at some point, you 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 would think, okay, I think I'm over this now. Do you think that would have ever happened at Seven Alan not? Ended? Um, it was starting to get there. Oh, is it? Um, okay. I think more than anything, what made me stay was my loyalty um to the creators of the show. Um. Um, Danny Orendal and 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 um, Miss Annie Basson. So, but as you grow as well as an artist, in between, um, in the eighteen years that I was playing Aggie, I was doing other things, various other things as well. I was on Shagai Lembe. Um, I did um, two plays. I did commercials. So, mm-hmm. I it was starting to get there, not because I felt like I I didn't love working there anymore, but because I had grown as an actress and as an individual, and I, I needed to move to higher strengths and, and other things. And you did movies in that time. You worked with Leon Schuster. Yeah. You you played uh, a female traffic officer. Yes. Uh, yeah. Mad, Mad Buddies was yes. the name of the movie. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you also starred in My Father's War yes. and several others as well. And and you were also on stage uh, at, at the time, Caucasian Chalk Circle. Yeah, it was I at the I remember Joburg that Theater. book from, high, from drama school. Yes. Oh my goodness, yeah. I do. I, I did drama. <laughs> and Josie Jesus. Yes, yeah? that was also at the Joburg Theatre. And you also co-produced a reality TV series. Tell us about that one. Um, It was my first time Mm -hmm. Uh, co-producing with a team from Cape Town. It was a reality TV series based on plus size modeling. Mm. So it was like your your top modeling that Tyra Banks does, but we did the spin-off of it of plus size I like models. It. I like it. Um it was on Cape um Cape TV. Mm-hmm. Uh unfortunately we didn't uh were not able to get sponsors to be able to move on to season two. But it's still we're still working on it. Sponsors out there, <laughs> she's here, she needs you and I think Please. it's a, it's such an important one to do. Yeah. It's such an important one, especially for women. Oh, happy International Women's Day, yes, by the way. Yes. So yes, can somebody honor us with a sponsorship for the show? Please. Um, please, because, you know, it, it is so needed, especially with body image issues yeah. and, and what we are facing as women. Um, and I have to ask, how much of Aggie was you and how much of you was Aggie in those 18 years? Shoo. Two different people. <laughs> Aggie was so strict and so focused and by the book. I'm not saying that Mimi is a bit of Mimi's a bit of a rebel, but I'm not saying like she's like totally out of the book. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, the the it was a different, it was a different, there was a huge difference. It was a different vibe for Aggie. She had a walk. I had a walk for Aggie, which yeah. was weird. And yeah. everybody oh. kept on laughing on set and they're like, did you, did you just realize you just walked off as Aggie? I'm like, yes, because I'm in the scene. <laughs> <laughs> so it, 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 not, not so much to answer your question. It was, it, it was two different people, but it was such a joy. To did you ever her. get confused? Like if you were sitting with your family and you become Aggie all of a sudden? No. Never? <laughs> no, no, how do, how do, how do act How do actors do that? Um, Especially when you've played that character for so long. I know other actors say that they can't debrief mm. and let go of the mm. of the character when, when they go home. Um, I, I don't know. I've just always been able to to step in and out of the role and, and to myself. I never take work home. Because okay. then Aggie went through, especially the last couple of uh, years, she went through the most. She was depressing for me. I'm sure. So I always shook it off. So when I was finished filming, when I get into the car, I start playing music so that I can just get her out of the system. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So 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 you exorcised Aggie every yes, time you left the system. Every single time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So tell me about Mimi. Where did that name come from? Who gave you the name Mimi? My aunt uh, from my grandfather's side, my 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 mom's dad gave me that name. Her name is Mona Lisa. Oh, and oh. Yes, so <laughs> my cousin was then named Mona Lisa and she named me Mimi because I kept on saying me, me, me the uh, whole time. And they said, can we just name this child Mimi? So I that's how it. I got it, actually. <laughs> that is such but a cute I, story. Yes, but I was saying me as in me, yeah. but they gave me M-I-M-I. And yeah, that's how <laughs> yeah, I got you are it. Mimi. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about you, you then, Mimi. Yes. And let's talk about, um, you know, it is the upside of failure. What was your first experience with failure. I mean, you were obviously successful 18 years. You landed that role, iconic, uh, you know, role. And, and, and that's how you've probably been known for a very long time, yeah. right? As Aggie. So 
what was your first experience of failure as far as you can think back? As far as I can think back, my first encounter or, 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 or experience with failure was in high school. Mm. And I've, even far back than that, um, it, it, it was my it was my parents' marriage, not it not working out. But in high school, it was me not becoming a prefect. <gasps> I was like, <laughs> <laughs> they didn't choose me, me. They no. didn't choose me, me. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a, it's a, but it's it, it goes back far, far uh, further than that. You know, it goes back quite far. I think it was when I was still a kid because I I felt I am a failure because. I was the reason why my folks were fighting so much. How old were you then? Just to put sure. it, just to create a picture for us. How old was were you when I this was, was so happening? I was so very young, um, around six, seven. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. Um, so, and and I, I've got an older brother, so obviously, it didn't make sense that why was I the one that was why the were problem? you taking? Yeah. 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 So I felt like I'm the problem. Um, I, I I wouldn't have described it as failure then because I didn't know what it was, but I just felt like if I'm not around, mm. then this would not be happening. Yeah. Okay, but you you, you don't feel that way anymore, right? No. Okay, no. thank goodness, because you know it wasn't you. <laughs> yes. It was them, it was not you. We've got a, a comment from Heidi already saying, Yveka, please tell Mimi, thank you, thank you, thank you for all the seven line years. I just loved Aggie, and that's Heidi in The Hague. Oh, wow, yes. Thank you, Heidi. Yes. Thank you very much. And if you do want to chat to Mimi... If you do want to give it, or Aggie, or whatever you want to call yes. it, you'll take any name today, right? <laughs> At it's this fine. Point. It's Friday. 011 883 0702 is where you can chat to her, tell her how you feel, tell her how much you miss Aggie, or you can WhatsApp or voice note us on 072 702 1702 or SMS us on 31702. If you have worked with Mimi and you have some very juicy backstage stories to tell us, we also <laughs> want to hear those. Please do tell us. And, um, you know, with this career, I would imagine uh, Mimi come. Uh, a lot of highs and lows, a lot of challenging times where also as, as actors and actresses, like you, like you experienced, mm -hmm. you never know if you're going to have that job the next yeah. day. Nothing is, nothing is written or cast in stone. Yes. So if you could pick out some of your lows, let's start there. Uh, as popular as you were, as you know, established as you were as Aggie in that, in that role for 18 years, what, what would you, what stand out as your lows in all of this time? My lows would definitely be the public the negative public um comments that, the criticism um mm. and and it's 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 okay to criticize one on their work i will take that any day because we learn from that um it was personal attacks you know it was always on oh my goodness you're so big oh this and that. it it was those kind of things I read a tweet once many years ago I had gone to an event and um this um photographer took a nice picture of me and I posted it on Twitter and somebody commented and said if this lady doesn't think that her partner is cheating on her because she's so big I almost I almost collapsed that day <laughs> I'm speechless for a change yeah so it it, it, it those those were the lows that wow. th that I can speak of um but um when it comes to to I just focused on my work and when it comes to the work side of things um, I tried my best. Hey, I went to all the auditions and even when I didn't get them, you've got to quickly move along because this yeah. industry keeps moving. There's yeah. no time for, oh, I didn't yeah. get it. Yeah. You've got to quickly move along with it. And how did you do that? How did you pick yourself up every time something didn't work out? And how did you how did you deal with, with comments like that? It was very ugly. I hope that person is actually listening and is very ashamed of themselves right now. You know, we've, <laughs> we've got this thing in this industry of do not answer to um, trolls because you're giving them the platform to shine yeah. and it's your platform. So I really desperately wanted to respond that day and I told myself, just stay away from it. And then I stayed away from, from Twitter for a while. I think up until this day, I'm still very reluctant to go on Twitter. I do go, but I, I view other people's stuff. I'm just very reluctant to go. Um, I just feel like it would have ended really badly had I responded and that's mm -hmm. not what we wanted to do. And how one just moves on without bagging that gig that you so mm. hoped for mm. um i for one definitely just think i i just move on to the next and i'm like okay maybe it wasn't mine it wasn't meant for me let me just go on what is meant for me will eventually find me as yeah. well something bigger yeah. something bigger is going to find you yeah. and that that was just not your time yes. it wasn't meant for you at that time yeah. we've got a couple of people on the lines we've also got oh. some songs that you've sent to us so i think let's first uh should we i think sebastian's been holding on the longest hasn't he hi sebastian 
Hi, Rebecca. I just want to say to Mimi, thank you for teaching me of recon. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually from Durban, so coming to Johannesburg, my Afrikaans wasn't so good. My ek wil net sê dankie Eggy, on dit het geniet en alles van die beste. I wish you all the best oh. and stay as bubbly as you are. Oh. Thank you, Yuvi. Great oh, show. Wonderful, Bye-bye. Sebastian. Thank you so much. See, you oh. can add Afrikaans teacher to your resume now. There we now. go, yeah. <laughs> I wish Seven the Land was still on that. I can get my children to watch it and learn Afrikaans. It is their biggest nightmare. Yeah. Absolutely biggest nightmare. Yeah, I mean, I learned with uh, with the fans. When I started working on Seven the Land, my Afrikaans wasn't so good. I was just going to ask, did you grow up in an Afrikaans-speaking household? No. And that was That must have been quite a task. <laughs> to take on a role it, like it, that. It really, really was. I decided to do uh, my second year of drama in Afrikaans. We had a choice to, uh, to be in the English group or the Afrikaans group. <gasps> and I chose the Afrikaans group because I thought, okay, let's see how it goes. You know, there yeah. isn't a lot of actresses in the country that are black that speak English, um, Venek and Afrikaans. So good. let me just see how it goes. That good was brave. Move. Good move. And here we are. Yes. So thank you, Sebastian. <laughs> oh, well, that's wonderful. Where well, we've got a Charity on the line from Cosmo City. Hi, Charity. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna cry. <laughs> don't, don't. I'm gonna cry too. Don't cry. You used to don't work cry. together, yes. Let's just let's just explain the the, the, the screaming and the tears. Okay. <laughs> they used to work together. What do you want to say? Yeah. Hi, Charity. Okay. Um. Um. I, like she's saying, I'm gonna cry also, but I will not cry. Um. I just wanted to say I worked with her earlier on. You said uh, we, we must call anything you have juicy stuff. I don't necessarily have juicy stuff that I can think of on the top of my head now. I worked with her from 2002, I think, if I'm ri- not right, yeah. until till now, uh, as the line ended. But one thing that I will, we build a very good friendship, as you can experience now. But one thing I can tell you about Mimi professionally, I'm sure she was there now. The interview was at two o'clock. I'm sure she was there at one o'clock or half past one. <laughs> I wanted to be at half past one and then I was stuck on the road with traffic. But Coco. she made it on time. She made it on time. Exactly. She was here. Yes. And, and, She's and, that girl. Yeah, and not frazzled. <laughs> yeah, she is that girl. She will be, she, she, it's not even radio, it's not TV, but I'm sure she's dressed appropriately. She, she will speak appropriately. She, like whatever Mimi does, she does it with excellence. And I'm not trying to buy her face. She does it with professionalism. And 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 I'm happy and I'm proud of her where she is. Well, Love you, my friend. Well, and wait, yeah. You can't go yet. I want to know. Did she have a diva yeah. moment at any point? <laughs> oh, oh, obviously. Uh, you, 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 can't, you can't work in a place like that with people for more than 10 years. And somewhere, somehow the diva doesn't come out. You just up. lose it. You lose it at some point yes, when you're hangry. Yes, yeah, yes, that's yes. It. You've been working yeah. for seven hours and they haven't brought out like uh, water or anything at that point. No. <laughs> In in her case, it's food. Oh. Um, uh, <laughs> the, uh. caterers, the caterers will tell you a different story. She loved her food. Um, uh, we loved our food. We ended up, yeah. my office was a food place. But yeah, uh-huh. so so all those diva moments were, 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 were off stage, but they, they were not rude or anything like that. But it's when she wanted her food. You best give her her food. Well, it's called it's called being hangry. So that's yes. what happens. Well, she, well Charity, I, I can tell you she's looking wonderful and fresh and beautiful and so yeah, humble. Yeah. Absolutely humble. I believe yeah. everything yeah. you say. Thank yeah. you for calling yeah. in. And you're lucky I Thank carry you. tissues to work today. She's crying now. <laughs> of Nobushle uh, Mimi Matlasela, otherwise known as Aggie on Seven Delan is the only way for me to describe it very yes. quickly. Um, uh, she is, uh, and she's a dancing queen as well, on top of everything else. <laughs> Actress, voiceover artist, model, MC, uh, icon, and she's a dancing queen. What does that song mean? Why did you give us that one to play for you? Um, I gave that song because I believe in love and that song speaks obviously about... Um, a man and a woman in in love, and ah. I, mm. I am I am love. <laughs> I, I love. am for love, and um, obviously, definitely reminds me of me and my boo thang when we started out, and this was our song. Is your boo thang still with you? Yes. Oh wow. Okay. So how, how long now? Ah, uh, sure. We were together for twenty years, mm-hmm. and then we separated for about six or so, and then we got back together. So. 
two decades. Wow, that's a long time. A very long that's time. That's a long time. We have so many comments <laughs> that have come up for you, and we're going to talk more uh, about what you consider your failures and how you got through them. But let me read, read very quickly some of these. Uh, good afternoon. Please let Nobotle know that I appreciate her craft. She is a total embodiment of fantastic. I hope we'll see more of her lively work, and that's Grand Obadia. I think that's the name, Grand Obadia, coming through on uh, on WhatsApp. It is the upside of failure, and my wonderful special guest today, Nobushle Mimi Matlasela, actress, voiceover artist, model, and MC. You'd know her, and I have to, you, people identify with you as Aggie from Sivendalan. You are the Aggie. Um, it used to air on SABC2 on weekdays at 6 o'clock, but she's done so much more than that. She's talking to us about her failures and what she considers her failures. And uh, we have a couple of voice notes for you, Mimi. Yes. Uh, sh- should we take a listen to those? Because, yes. uh, yeah, they've been lined up. Let's take a listen to some of those before we carry on. Hi, Vega. Good afternoon. Thank you very much for bringing us Mimi. I will call her Mimi. You know, she's our uh, family celebrity, very much grounded. You know, when we have got family functions, she's the one who really rolls up her sleeves and, uh, you know, even do the cooking. Absolutely amazing. Um, It's such a joy, you know, to have um, someone that we often see, you know, on television, whom we can brag about, you know, with (laughs) in Alex and even in Venda as well. Thank you so much. Oh, and that's, Hi, Tan- that's Hi, amazing. Tandika. I want to know from Mimi if she was ever being body shamed um, mm. or bullied because of her, her body and how has she coped and what message would she tell people who often find themselves being mocked because of their body shapes. Thank Mm. you. Okay, so let me explain Tandeka at the beginning of that one. Yesterday yes. I asked our listeners to give me a Zulu name, a middle name yeah. that rang with Yveka Rangapan, middle name. So Tandeka was the name. Uh-huh. Some of them suggested, so I think it's kind of stuck <laughs> today. But yes, uh, Mimi, you did speak about uh, people tweeting. Oh, there was one tweet. There was one idiot out there. Yeah, I mean, one the, <laughs> at the time. That, at that, at that time, there was. Yes. I mean, and the others, you kind of didn't even go back yes, to check, right? Yeah, so, definitely. So she, they want to know, yeah, your your experience with body shaming and, and how you've dealt with it. Um, my experience with body shaming, I've had it all my life. I've never known a thinner version of me. I've been big <laughs> all my life. So I, I prefer the term voluptuous. <laughs> voluptuous. Don't say big. There we go. Yes. Voluptuous. Yes. I love that. Mm-hmm. I'm going to take it and own it. Voluptu- if you own don't it, mind. baby. Own it. So yeah. it's it's that. I've never known any other version of me and all my life I've had uh, body shaming but even more so it got worse when I was older mm. it's it's in, it's interesting it was when I was a, an adult in my adulthood it was adults that were body shaming me mm. I didn't get it so much as a kid yeah but only when I was older and I thought to myself this is odd anyway it's it's got nothing to do with me um there the were some that touched me here and there but i just carried on i just moved on with my life because i thought i was fabulous i still think i'm fabulous Great. good for I you i think i'm very beautiful so i just matched on with that energy i love it yeah. i love it <laughs> voluptuous and beautiful and yes. absolutely amazing yeah. wonderful when you say there were those it became an issue when you were older was it was it those aunties in the family or was it the viewers or was it everyone it was um, not so much in my family. Uh, it was definitely just the public because now I'm in a public domain. I am on TV every day. I am what they call a celebrity. Yes. So everything about me is being scrutinized. Wow. Everything, what I, what I wear, what I look like. So it, 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 was, it, was, it was the public. And sometimes yeah. I went to an event once where I was booked as an MC for a festival in Cape Town. And as I was busy on stage introducing um, the new acts coming on stage and whatever, a guy came on to me, older guy, much mm. older than me. He could have been my grandfather. Mm. And he said to me, geez, but you are so big in real life. <gasps> Navigating in the, same, in the same path. We sort of separated somewhat. Was that the six years when you were apart? Yes, okay. yeah. Um, because we were no longer on the same page with the things that um, what I was going for and he felt some somewhat inadequate to me because I'm this successful public persona and you know, only only now I learned those things after we've gotten back together. He's like, this, this is how I was feeling. But he never showed me that. Mm. He always showed me the strength and the support. He never showed me his without, uh, for lack of a better word, he never showed me his weakness, like the demons that he was struggling with, you know. So 
yeah, it's 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 interesting to find it out now and to work through it even mm. now that we're back together. Uh, Mimi, I mean, is it for your boo thing? But you also have a connection with Coco, who called earlier. Charity, you call her Coco. When yes, you, yes, when you screamed and cried. Yeah, <laughs> um, it's your the song? song is is necessarily uh, not for my boo thing. It's basically. Um, it says the Lord still loves me. Ah. Uh, we are not perfect um, as as a people. And someone is sitting somewhere and thinking they are not good enough. Like I've always thought with myself and that I cannot achieve the things that I've achieved. And it doesn't mean that um, God doesn't love you or the people around you don't love you. You are good enough. And even if you are not perfect, the Lord loves you and we love you. Mm. Just know if you are sitting somewhere and going through something, I play the song every single morning just to lift up my spirits. And it gives you a challenge for, for a lesson to be learned, yeah? Yeah. I mean, that's how we can comfort ourselves because we go, why me? Yeah. Especially after what you just told us about yeah. the um, sexual abuse, the childhood sexual abuse, the two suicide attempts as well, which you consider your failure. But yeah. I think I think you were very brave. I think you were very brave. Um, you held it in for so long. Um, and you know, and some will say, yeah, you should have said. You should, it's, it's not easy until you've been in that position. I would imagine. Yeah. So, and and then considering failure, your parents' divorce when you were young, you thought it was because of you. Yeah. So that is your first memory of failure. Yeah. What would be your third one? <sighs> I mean, you still you have to constantly reinvent yourself. <laughs> Being in this industry is not easy. Like, I feel. My third one now, besides the industry, just a personal one, mm. is I'm struggling with falling pregnant. So it's a story that I've been trying to sort out and going to doctors, but I'm at a point now where I'm tired mm. of trying whatever that needs to be tried. I think mentally and emotionally, I'm just exhausted of it. Um, and I'm just, I'm not getting that breakthrough. Mm. I'm not getting that it's its going to be okay. Even though I know that it's going to be okay, I just still feel like this obstacle, this hurdle is so hard to get over. I'm, that's where I am in my life now. And it, it's, it's still very, I don't know how to put it, it's still very painful to move past it. But some days are better than others. Um, eventually, I do hope to get to a better place where I, it doesn't make me feel like this because it is yeah. making me feel like this currently. I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry so, I made you feel like this right now. But but thank you for sharing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so much. Um, yeah. I mean, somebody can look at you and go, this person has been through so much and has, you know, and, and they know you as this character on a screen. Yeah. But and how do you... How do you get on with your days? How do you get on with putting that mask on and getting in front of a camera um, and, and putting Aggie on when you, when you had to in those times? Ha and living with all of this that you, 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 you've told us about today. And I think that's where uh, my escapism was. Uh -huh. um, and, and escapism for, for, an, for an actor is always being able to step into somebody else's shoes and, 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 and tell stories, you know, so you don't focus and sit too much in your in your challenges, in your failures, in your struggles, you know? So um, I, I, I wouldn't say I I miss acting because I believe I'm, I'm still in it. I'm still going through it. I miss the daily uh, routine of getting into Aggie so I can escape mm -hmm. a bit of my my, my struggles and, yeah. and, and challenges. Yeah. yeah. So uh, how I do it is basically escape into being another role. <laughs> well, now you don't have Aggie. Where are you escaping? Where are you escaping to? Um, I'm not escaping now. That's the scariest okay, thing. I'm having to it. sit and deal with it because escape also it doesn't necessarily mean it's a good thing. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. have to face it at some at point because it's going to gonna catch up with yeah. you at some point. Yeah. Okay, well, we're almost at the end of our conversation. I'm so sad, but, <laughs> I'm, 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 but I'm so inspired by you. I'm really, really inspired by you, uh, Mimi. And, you know, if there was one bit of advice you could give to anyone who's been through either all the things you've been through or one of them or two of them, what would that be today? Be kind with yourself, first and foremost. Um know that you are not alone. I know it may seem like you are literally in your own corner, but you're not alone. As soon as you speak to someone, you will notice the love and support that you have. Um, 
Yeah, that's that's what I can say. And you are not alone. He still loves me, like you, like the song said. He yeah. still loves me. You've got someone, something, whatever you believe in, watching over you. Yeah. And I wish you all the luck. I can't Thank wait to see you. you on that stage. Thank at you. At some point. Thank you so much. What an honor it's been to share your journey with you, even if it was just an hour today. Thank Rabushle, you. Mimi, Matlasela. Thank you. Thank you. 702. The upside of failure. Sometimes failure is the foundation of greatest success stories.